Hey, Whitehead SEO Group. How are you doing, guys? <laughs> I have an honorable guest today. Um, great, a great experience for all of us, I'm sure. I have Bill Slavsky uh, next to me online for this exclusive uh, one-of-a-kind, <laughs> first-of-its-kind uh, live uh, AMA session within the group. So um, I want to start with thanking uh, Bill for, for his presence here. Uh, we are all very excited about the things that we're going to discuss. So the format, I think, should be around an hour long. Um, again, we are testing things. I'm testing things with this format, so hopefully it goes well. We have some questions um, pre-selected. Some of them are mine. Uh, some of them are one of the most common questions within the industry. And some are coming from you uh, in the form of comments, which, uh, if I have enough time, I'm going to ask uh, Bill to... Uh, to share his take on them. So, uh, hello, Bill. Uh, how are you doing today? I'm doing fine. How are you? Yeah, me too. I'm <laughs> super excited <laughs> right now. It, it's probably showing on my face. Yeah. Uh, so, um, before we start, um, I think um, most of the people within the group should be aware of... of um, your role within the SEO industry. Uh, you've been here for uh, more than a couple of decades, I think even before Google um, actually existed. Uh, so um, you've seen it all pretty much. Um, coming I'm, I'm, going I'm sure I missed some things. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> probably, but uh, you know, uh, much more than all of us uh, <laughs> together, probably even. Uh, so uh, why don't you uh, start with saying something about yourself? Um, uh, who you are, or what have you been up to recently? Okay, I'm the director of SEO research for a company called GoFish Digital, which is located uh, just outside the Beltway around Washington, D.C. in Virginia. I used to live in Virginia until three years ago when I moved out here to Carlsbad, California. Um, Enjoying the move. Uh, I love the weather. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I, I like that there are lots of meetups and uh, groups of people uh, whom I can talk to and listen to. And uh, I've been to the last one I went to was uh, a local guide meetup. Mm. So there are lots of people talking about search and SEO and, uh, Enjoy that online too. Uh, enjoy being in the white hat. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I I I blog at SEO by the Sea, where I tend to write a lot about patents, mm -hmm. search-related patents from Google, mostly from Google. But I've been looking at some other ones. Uh, right now, I'm writing a blog post about. Deep links from Microsoft mm -hmm. because I, I've uh, seen site links. I've written a post, a couple posts about site links from Google, one in 2006, one in 2015. And I've noticed that Bing is doing site links now too. In some cases, they're a lot better than the ones at Google. In some cases, they're a lot worse. So I yeah. wanted to. Uh, get an idea of how they came up with the site links they came up with. So I went to the U.S. Uh, Patent and Trademark Office, did a search for Microsoft patents dealing with site links. Didn't get any. Wow. So, so I, I did a search on Google for Microsoft and site links, and I found out that they're not called that by mm -hmm. Microsoft. They're called deep links. Yeah, so but they're probably the, basically the same thing as I, I went back to the patent office and I did a search for Microsoft and Deep Links and I found a couple patents about them. Mm -hmm. They look very similar. The idea with, with the Microsoft ones is uh, they follow uh, user behavior uh, information to try to identify landing pages on websites. Pages that people tend to land on and spend time at. And yeah. those tend to be the ones that they include as deep links. Mm -hmm. 
So are there any pieces of advice um, if you have acquainted yourself enough with the uh, with the subject that can help us get more site links because more site links in Google results means more visibility, right? Because we're occupying a, a larger piece of the of the page. Right. If, if somebody searches for your business name, uh, mm -hmm. you might get site links uh, from Google. So you get an extra four or six or eight in some cases mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. links that might be to important pages on your site that people tend to want to visit like uh, your contact page or a page about the services that you offer, which are good pages to have showing in yeah. search results. So basically uh, you were saying that it's kind of a user experience kind of thing, uh, meaning that it shows the interest of the user while browsing through your website and probably search engines uh, are suggesting this in the form of site links. Um, the the first patent from Google that came out about site links said that they're going to pay attention to uh, user activity around your website to try to identify which pages they include should include as site links. Mm -hmm. And the second one they came out with said they're going to look at the navigation on your site and try to identify which uh, links in your navigation tend to stand out the most. Mm -hmm. And those will be the things that they use as site links. I think maybe they went around that backwards. They should have stayed uh, with the way they were doing it before, mm -hmm. with identifying which were the pages most likely people would want to visit on your site. Uh, yeah. Um, uh, so, so, if you're, Sorry. so if you're Sorry. if you're WordPress, for instance. Uh, your site links might include like a download link for mm -hmm. people to download WordPress software. Yeah. It might include a, a support link for people to get support information about uh, WordPress or a contact uh, page. Those would be three ideal landing pages uh, yeah. or site links for WordPress. So if you think about your own website, which pages would you want people to link to? Mm -hmm. And those would ideally be the ones that uh, Google would link to in your site links, which if you want to maybe get Google to start linking to them in your site links, try to look at your navigation and find a way to make those pages that you like the most stand out somehow. Yeah. So one final question before we move to the next ones, because we have uh, quite a few. So uh, do you think that building more links to particular pages will increase the odds of them being included as site links? Do you think that links play some role here? I think having links in your navigation for those pages help. If, mm -hmm. if you use pictures of the words uh, that you're linking to, make sure you use alt text in mm -hmm. those pictures because otherwise you may not get any site links yeah all right that, that's a great piece of advice all right so um to the next question which is <laughs> obviously very um intriguing to me so how how did you start uh, with google patents why why did you become interested in them in the first place how did this whole story begin okay so as an seo i'm supposed to be able to look at a website and try to figure out what it's about, who its audience is, uh, what they offer to people. So I thought about that with Google. I said, how do I get that information? Mm -hmm. Well, I could look at uh, stuff that they publish that tells us what they do. There's some stuff that they publish, like patents, which isn't intended for SEOs or marketers. It's intended to help them protect their intellectual property. Yeah. And they're supposed to describe their intellectual property within those. So uh, I started looking at some and noticed that if, if they have any assumptions about the web, about search, about searchers, they're often very open to discussing those there. Mm -hmm. And uh, sometimes the language is really technical and sometimes it's filled with legalese. Yeah. But I've, if I copy it, and paste it into Notepad and start deleting the stuff that just really doesn't help 
I'm left over with a lot of useful information. Yeah. So um, before we move to the next question, which has to do with patents again, how um, how much can we trust um, whatever information is included in those documents, the, the patents? Is it uh, coming from first hand? Uh, is it to be uh, trusted uh, fully? Patents aren't a guarantee that their Google's doing something. They're not a roadmap of how mm. they exactly do it. So sometimes they're a little bit difficult to read. They uh, There's a phrase that shows up in a lot of patents uh, that says patents are written for people learned in the art. Mm -hmm. So they can be technical. They can yeah. be – so. One of the most recent ones I uh, read and wrote about involved uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning. Mm -hmm. And it was tough. It was difficult. Uh, but one of the things I liked about it was they had lots of links, or no links, they have lots of uh, uh, citations to mm -hmm. papers that people had written, including people who had written the patent. Uh, so I said, okay, if I search for these on Google, find links to them, I can learn a lot. Yeah. So yeah. so I, I found links to some and started reading them and said, okay, I'm going to include links to these in my blog post so that other yeah. people can learn from them. Uh, yeah. So actually that's one of the things which is very specific for SEO by the Sea in terms of the content uh, you guys publish. Uh, basically you're digesting a lot of uh, hard to understand information regarding patents and you're trying to uh, put it in front of the audience in a more understandable, um, easy to get language, right? I took a, uh, I taught a class on internet literacy for a bunch of school teachers. Mm -hmm. And I found I learn best by trying to teach other people. If yeah. I can, if I can put the concepts in a easy to digest form, I learn it better. Yeah. So That's... I'm trying to do that through my website. Mm -hmm. So it's helping. Uh, uh, it's basically a win-win process. So you you give them easy to understand knowledge, and you are bettering your own uh, in the meantime. Right. Yeah. So uh, can we just say a couple of words about what what Google what a Google patent actually is? Really short, because a lot of uh, our um, members are really starting with SEO, and they know some basic stuff like uh, content matters a lot. You know, backlinks matter a lot. Keyword research is a vital part of of your SEO success. But patents are a bit. I don't know, like coming from another universe, like mathematician <laughs> type of stuff. Like people uh, find it fancy to mention patents, but they don't really, at least that's that's how I perceive things. They don't really get it, uh, what it means. It's just making them look bad. Okay, a, a patent is a, a, a form of, of legal protection, like copyrights or trademarks. Mm -hmm. uh, it differs from those in that if you come up with a patent, you're uh, publishing it in exchange for the right to exclude other people from using the process that you've patented. Mm -hmm. So if you come up with a way to uh, build a new type of social network and you describe it in a mm -hmm. patent, uh, Facebook can't read your patent and say, that's a good idea. I'm going to come up with a new type of social network yeah, the same way. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And um, what what importance does it have for, for the SEO world? Uh, because, uh, for example, when I was browsing for some information while I was preparing myself for this interview, I uh, started with Google Patents, but then I started tweaking the query to uh, Google Patents and SEO because I was getting tons of really sophisticated information and I figured that probably I should add another, um, you know, uh, keyword that um, puts Google towards, you know, SEO in particular because otherwise I was getting all kinds of <laughs> super hard to understand <laughs> things, to be honest. Yeah. 
Some of it is hard to understand. Some of it, uh, uh, what I was telling you before about deep links, mm -hmm. uh, I said Google calls them site links. Microsoft calls them deep links. So you have to recognize or realize that uh, the words that they use might differ based mm -hmm. upon the company that uh, writes the patent. Uh, yeah. And and I recognize the names of lots of search engineers from Google now because of patents. I know what types of things they write about. Uh, I know that there's a guy named uh, Tristan Upstill from Google who's a, a search quality engineer, mm -hmm. like Navneet Panda. And yeah. for both of those guys, they'll write about uh, – how to make a website high quality. Mm -hmm. So I'm right you now. And Jeffrey Dean, who's the head of uh, the Google brain team also writes about uh, uh, website architecture and links mm -hmm. and how things are put together. Uh, so I, I recognize names now. Uh, I recognize some of the, what some of the phrases they, they use stand for that maybe comes to you after some experience. Uh, if a Google patent uses the word content, they're not talking about content like in content marketing. They're talking about advertisements. Yeah. It's, it's unique to Google patents. They don't talk on, on the Google support pages or help pages. They don't refer to advertisements there as content, mm -hmm. but in patents they do. Yeah, I see. I see. Uh, so um, naturally, uh, the next question are: What are the latest, most interesting patents that you've been working on that you've been reading? Um, you mentioned something about Rank Brain a while ago. Maybe some other stuff. Uh, Rank Brain is really. Um, huge step uh, towards understanding, you know, uh, the meaning behind words and to serving those ambiguous queries that Google wasn't very good at previously. Okay, there's one that I like a lot that's somewhat related to the uh, this rank brain one, but a little bit different. And mm -hmm. they they uh, uh, refer to something called context vectors mm -hmm. when they're talking about. Uh, Keywords. Okay, so one of the examples they give is a horse to an equestrian is an animal. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. A horse to a carpenter is a tool. Yeah. A, exactly. horse, a horse to uh, a gymnast is a piece of exercise equipment. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, like a fault. Yeah. So they'll, they'll look in a knowledge base like Wikipedia, find these words that have similar meanings and uh, assign them a different context. Uh, see how many times they're mentioned in those knowledge bases and they'll use those contexts to get a better idea of what's being referred to on a web page when someone talks about it. So if you have a page about horses and they mention the word thoroughbred or saddle, mm -hmm. Or mm -hmm. stirrups, they're talking about an animal. Yeah. If if, if uh, uh, they mention the word horse and they're talking about saws and house building mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. wood and so on, they're talking about carpenters. Yeah. So yeah. the context makes a big difference in terms of uh, what words are being talked about and how they might index the meanings of different words that have different meanings. Yeah, yeah. So that's how Google learns. Actually, uh, it might probably pull information from some huge sources like Wikipedia, maybe integrate them in their own algorithm um, all together with their own rank brain system uh, because Google needs more information to study people's language, right? To, to understand what they actually mean, whether it's horse like the animal horse, the tool, the, the gymnastic. Um, right. So, so if I'm writing a page about horses, and it's the animals. I might go to Wikipedia and look up horses in Wikipedia and see which words might be the words that mean horse to me mm -hmm. within that context and maybe include those words on my page about horses. Mm -hmm. 
So um, are we referring to something like probably it's very simplistic, uh, simplistically said. Probably it's much more than that, but something like LSI keywords. Um, do they play some role? And TF-IDF analysis. Okay, uh, LSI keywords is there's a website that you can search for LSI keywords. They don't tell you how the, what the technology behind their keywords are, what the technology behind their site is. LSI, latent semantic indexing, was a concept developed by Microsoft in 1990. Uh, mm -hmm. One of the researchers was Susan Dumas, and she came up with this uh, system where you could index a very static set of documents, like mm -hmm. not web pages. The web, the web changes too quickly. If yeah. you were to apply LSI to the web, you'd have to keep on restarting it because it changes so often. Mm -hmm. People rewrite content, people add new links. Uh, it, it, LSI is not a good way to talk about the web. I Even see. though there, there may be a, a website called LSI Keywords, which doesn't necessarily do a bad job, uh, mm -hmm. there are lots of ways to come up with uh, synonyms. Like uh, a railroad car is not a synonym, synonym for a Jaguar or a Mazda. Yeah. You know, it's, it's a synonym, synonym for a boxcar or a trolley. Yeah, but there are different things. Uh, there are a lot of patents from Google that deal with uh, synonyms mm -hmm. that have nothing to do with LSI. Yeah, and Rank Brain has nothing to do with LSI. Mm -hmm. There are lots of SEO gurus or experts, and I use those terms loosely because. They're not necessarily uh, who say use LSI keywords mm -hmm. and they don't know what LSI actually is. They don't recognize that it has nothing to do with the synonyms that Google is showing people. No, LSI does not play a role in search. There's yeah. a, there's a, a process that Google came up with called probabilistic latent semantic indexing which is related to LSI, they use it in uh, paid search mm -hmm. to identify words that might be related to uh, keywords that people search for. Yeah. Uh, but they don't use it in things like Rank Brain or Hummingbird. I see, I see. All right, so we're talking about keywords, so while we're on the topic, um, so um, many people, experts or just regular webmasters who are just starting with SEO, uh, they have heard the um, statement that uh, keyword research is one of the pillars um, uh, for SEO, for, for successful SEO campaigns and uh, SEO overall success. So um, if we're talking about keyword research, um, so what's important to, to know for uh, people who are just starting or have started a while ago, but they haven't really uh, gone into the nitty gritty of, of keyword research. So some some really uh, easy to follow tips how, how they can start uh, choosing their keywords for their websites. One of the best ways to start doing keyword research is listening, social mm -hmm. listening sometimes. but. Finding who your audience is, who the people you want to sell things to, uh, services or goods or whatever, and finding out where they congregate on the web and listening to them talk about mm -hmm. your, what you offer, seeing yeah. which words they use, because those are the words they might search with and expect to see in your pages. So, yeah, you, know, you can go to a, a, a keyword planning tool. A keyword suggestion tool from Google and uh, get some idea of what search volumes are associated with different words from that, which might give you an idea of, of what you want to use as a keyword on your page. But listen to your audience and, and how they talk about what you offer. Because I've, I've worked with uh, clients who uh, 
wanted to use certain vanity terms. And there were things that people would never search for mm -hmm. and had to talk them out of it. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, I said, do you want to actually sell any of these? <laughs> 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 yeah, so but so we, we've got to find the words that people will use to look for what you have. Mm -hmm. And in that regard, uh, how much is Google helping us today? Because it really started understanding uh, human language in a much better way. So if you're using not the accurate phrases, but Google is sophisticated enough, clever enough today, will this be of help or you should really do your homework well with keyword research so that you don't end up being nowhere? Doing your research well, understanding your audience well, listening to them uh, can really make a difference in how you set up your website. If you uh, organize your website by uh, uh, what's known as information architecture and separate it into sections, uh, that are important that people will search for that they'll expect to see your site. Uh, that's going to help you. If you, I, I mentioned uh, when I was talking about the contexts and horses. Uh, yeah. If you're writing a page about horses, go to the Wikipedia page on horses and see how they talk about horses and use some of those words. Yeah. Uh, there are other knowledge bases other than Wikipedia on the web. There's a uh, uh, they look at Yahoo Finance to find out about companies. They look about the Internet Movie Database. You okay. can perform a search for one of the keywords you selected and see what the top 20 or 30 pages in Google are. Uh, so, so if you uh, do a search for horses in Google, and look at the top 20 or 30 pages and see uh, what phrases they use, what mm -hmm. categories they write about, and think mm -hmm. about using some of those. That'll help Google understand better that your page is about horses mm -hmm. or you know, other topics that you might write about. Yeah, I, I see. That's that's a great piece of advice. I just recently uh, browsed for something a few hours back, uh, Hero which comes from Help a Reporter Out. That's a website right. that connects yeah, journalists and writers. So basically, when I ran from my location, I'm in Bulgaria right now, when I ran Hero, the um, abbreviation, not the full name, yeah. I, I got mixtured results. So on the top was helpareporterout.com. And then I, um, I'm i actually looking at this right now. Some website, herobikes.com, which has to do with uh, BMX bikes uh, or other kinds of models, kids' bikes, race bikes. And then uh, on the bottom, we have another result from the U.S., some kind of index for the for the U.S. market within Hero. And then again, a result from this website with bikes. So basically, we have a huge cluster one after another from the second to the eighth result or something like this for Hero Bikes. Then again, Hero, some sub page of Hero Reporter out, and then again, Bikes. So while we're on the topic of keyword research, if somebody wants to um, to try and penetrate such mixed um, uh, niche, which Google is not completely sure which is the best um, type of content to rank on the top, uh, any any actionable easy to follow, not, not something very sophisticated, ways that you can uh, increase your odds of uh, being ranked on the higher spots. What you ran into is known as clustering. Yeah. Google might cluster concepts based upon different meanings of words. So if you search for Java, mm -hmm. you've got a type of drink. You've got an island in Indonesia, I believe. And mm -hmm. you've got uh, a programming language. Most of the uh, results for Java will be involving the programming language. Mm -hmm. But you're going to see results from the drink and from the island, too. They're going to be mixed together probably in some percentage uh, like they exist on the web. If 10% if, uh, of the results involving Java involve the island mm -hmm. and 20% in, 
involved the drink and 70 percent involved the pro programming language mm -hmm. you search for java in the first 10 results you might see seven involving programming two involving the drink one involving the island mm -hmm. so that's based on google's understanding what people are most probably searching for when typing this particular phrase no that's based upon uh what they see on the web, what they index, mm -hmm. what they recognize the different meanings might be. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So uh, this takes us to the next question, which is content related. So um, when you are planning uh, on a new piece of content or you're just starting with your blog, uh, I'm constantly asking questions about newbies, but I think that they will be most uh, beneficial for, for the biggest chunk of our audience. So um, how do you plan the, the very first piece of content? How do you strategize some, some easy tips uh, for you know, the broader audience uh, if, if we can generalize something like this, uh, like content planning, uh, content writing? Um, I mentioned before social listening. And I think social listening plays an important role here. There are some websites that uh, can help you find questions that people commonly ask. Mm -hmm. uh, like Quora, for example. Right. Yeah. And, and those would be good places to go and, and say, find questions related to that topics you're interested in. And say, can I write a better answer to this question? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, don't don't just take somebody's answer and and try to improve it mm -hmm. because there are things like copyright. Yeah. I mean, I've I've seen people write about skyscraper techniques mm -hmm. where they say find content you can improve on and and they're just stealing the content they found and adding to it. Mm -hmm. Make it yeah. better. Yeah. You know, make make people say this is the authority site on this topic. I'm glad I came here. I'm gonna come back. I'm gonna search for it tomorrow. Yeah. Um uh, that's funny because I uh, I graduated in late 2015 a course from Brian Dean uh from SEO that works um, who is yeah. not considered the the you know the creator of, of this thing, skyscraper technique, but People know him under this, uh, uh, you know, thing. Uh, so, if if we are to to penetrate um, um, a, a keyword, uh, so you are saying that there are some things regarding copyrights which have to be taken into consideration, you know. But how how do we what what does better content without stealing anybody's thoughts uh, actually mean to the to the to the end writer, you know, behind the okay. PC screen? Put this in that context. In the case study he did for skyscraper technique, he mm -hmm. has screen prints from uh, Vaughn's summary of uh, Google ranking factors. Mm -hmm. And he wrote an a article on 200 ranking factors yeah. from Google yeah. where he stole 60, 70, 80 of Vaughn's uh, ranking factors he has listed mm -hmm. and he claims to have improved those mm -hmm. because Vaughn just listed them he wrote stuff like Mac, Matt Cutts wrote about this but said people were lying so mm -hmm. Google is probably using it as a ranking factor that's not critical thinking that's not really a reason to believe that Google's using it as a ranking factor because Matt Cutts said something about it. Mm -hmm. uh, you can do better. And yeah. now it, it sort of disturbs me to see people saying, yeah, great advice. No, mm -hmm. it's not great advice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So to, 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 to which extent uh, is it fine to quote your sources, for example, in the form of a link, in the form of a, some kind of a citation mention, so that you can use their knowledge. Is it, is it enough or does it take something more so that you can base your own content on somebody else's, uh, uh, you know, uh, findings, findings? Giving people credit, attributing something they've said to them 
is fine. Mm -hmm. Adding something of your own, some opinion of your own, is an improvement upon that. Mm -hmm. Say, I've seen this happen, as as this person suggesting, but I've seen uh, other things happen too, like this and this and this. So if you're going to do something like described here, uh, make sure uh, you uh, use photographs that actually show what they mean uh, uh, when the writing page about a certain topic. Uh, mm -hmm. I had a, a, a limo driver client, and he was talking about uh, uh, kids taking limo to the prom. Mm -hmm. And he showed a, a, a young guy and young girl. The girl had a corsage, and and the guy was dressed up in a suit, and the girl was in the gown. And you could tell they were high school students. I said, okay, it's a good picture, but show them the same couple getting into a limo. Mm -hmm. yeah. you know, actually have something that you can write in a alt text uh High schoolers going to the prom in a limo. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah, all right. That's great. Uh, that's definitely a deep insight on the topic. I know I, I've learned something new right now. Uh, yeah. So uh, the next the next subject would be links, um, definitely. So I, I've come across an article. It was a while ago saying that there were. I think it was on search engine land that there are three main ranking factors, which is content, links, and rank brain nowadays uh, it's it's a bit back in the day it's it's not something that i've read a couple of weeks ago but yeah it's pretty much like this even today i think to 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 a big extent so um links uh, that's that's the thing to me because i'm i'm offering SEO services I'm, I'm doing link building for my own blog and i've encountered a lot of people uh, within our community and outside it um that are struggling with this uh, with this part of the SEO process, because actually, to be honest, that's the only one which is outside your uh, your own control. So it's one thing to just publish great content or to polish your content or to improve your internal structure or speed or to put HTTPS, that's under your control. But when it comes to making other people vouch for you, vote for you, that's that's another story. And it seems that one of the reasons that paid links are still a thing is just because people are struggling that much that they prefer to to i don't know to use some more straightforward approach you pay for it you get it you 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 move on to the next target so uh, how are uh, uh, to to uh, how important are links uh, to to the overall seo campaign uh, for a website how important they are today uh, will they be a factor in the upcoming uh, months and years according to you it does seem that links still matter to Google, that pages are ranked based on how many links are pointing to those pages. Mm -hmm. So uh, the way I've found to uh, build links to my site, my pages, mm -hmm. and, and help clients out with those is to find out what information they might have that people might find to be interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, one client who who deals with uh, used cars across the country, yeah. and they've got big databases of what the most popular cars are uh, that people are buying. Uh, mm -hmm. So they took that. We made a map of the U.S. that showed what the biggest selling cars were in each state in the United States. Uh mm -hmm. It tended to be the Ford F-150 uh, truck in most states. But we wrote a uh, page, showed that map, got linked to from Boing Boing, from Ars Technica, uh, were mentioned on a radio station in L.A. Uh, it got a lot of people talking about it, uh, a lot of people linking to it because it was – Unique information from them mm -hmm. that uh, people weren't aware of, didn't know about. Uh, I spent a lot of time at the U.S. Patent Office. 
there's mm-hmm. a, a database that most people don't know about in there that talks about uh, when new patents are assigned from one company to another. <laughs> so I was looking through that, and I noticed one day that IBM sold a 1,000 patents to Google. Mm-hmm. So I looked through them. I found uh, there are about 15 or 20 of those related just to search. Mm-hmm. So I, I identified which ones, and I uh, I wrote. <laughs> I don't want to talk to them. Yeah, I guess like so. Third time or fourth time they called me today. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. So so I I. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's fine. Such things happen. Okay. So, so I, uh, I saw these patents. I, I wrote a blog post. I listed the 15 or 20 patents that were about search. And, and I said, IBM, uh, just this doesn't happen often. IBM sold a thousand or so patents to Google. Uh, uh, here were the ones that were most interesting to me. Mm-hmm. Uh, about three or four hours later, uh, I I noticed I was getting a surge of traffic to my website. Mm-hmm. And I saw that it was coming from the New York Times and the Wall Street Journal. Oh. So uh, Bloomberg News and... Yeah, you know, some of these really high-profile sites, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. which were good things to get links from. Yeah, yeah, definitely, most definitely. Uh, I think that what our members uh, and, you know, generally speaking, uh, people around the world who are trying to build links for their websites is, for example, if they're selling products directly, if we're talking about some kind of e-commerce or affiliate marketing kind of website, um, I mean, they have already embraced the idea that they have to produce something which is of of quality, which answers people's needs, questions. That's We are getting there. We are probably even there yet. But with the final part of making this piece of content, which is obviously useful to a huge audience, um, it involves maybe some kind of outreach or or social media promotion. But uh, I I know because I just started with next to my own blog internationally uh, February last year. And at first it was really hard for me because I was nobody outside my small country, Bulgaria. I I had zero contacts. And at first uh, I had some initial boost uh, from Brian Dean's course, of course, some some ideas which I uh, directly embraced. But it's really hard when when you are, uh, for example, in the SEO field, uh, at least to me at at that time, to get some uh, initial links coming. Because um, people are... From my hand, we are a great community. I mean, uh, we are living and dying by links, by content, by promotion, but at the same time, we are very friendly to each other. If you have been doing something for the industry for at least a while, uh, but at first, to me, it was mostly cold outreach. And I know it from first hand that a lot of people are so sick of it within the SEO industry, and that's totally normal because their inboxes are constantly filled up with junk and spam. Uh, Here's a a nice content. You wrote the same content. So how about you link to this because it makes your content better. This this is a dying concept, I think, Uh, at least within the SEO industry. It's all overdone. And it's as everything which has worked uh, well to some extent, and then people started doing it uh, across the or those people with affiliate sites, e-commerce sites, or brand new websites within an industry, even even though they they try their best to create a, a unique, useful um, piece of content, and they outreach in a okay, non-pushy way. Let's say they they did their homework well, but they meet all kinds of rejections, such as yeah, thanks, but we charge for links, or thanks, but uh, we are direct competitors, so uh, this is just not going to happen. 
or uh, what am I getting out of this? Okay, I'm, I'm going to give you a link. What can you give me? And then I can give you a link as well. Yeah, but you are a brand new domain. You, you can't pass me any authority. So uh, if you are um, meeting with such kind of, you know, reactions, uh, which is common for brand new domains, to me, I mean, uh, that's what I think at least. I've been there. Um, it's really tough to, I call it um, an exchange currency or exchange coin or some kind of commodity, you know, uh, so that you can become something which other people will also be interested in, in getting something back in return. So that's, I think, uh, that I think is one of the biggest problems for, for my own community, the white hat SEO, uh, because the very reason why people are still black hat, I don't know that these concepts are just, you know, fake words. Uh, there is no uh, such thing as white and black, but the white ones are trying to follow the guidelines. The black ones are trying to find some shortcuts. But to people who are really trying to... Um, go towards the right direction, but they meet this, this type of rejection, this type of answers. Um, what can we suggest to them? Or, or any recommendations so that they can start getting those links the, the, the next sure, I've, way? I've, I've got a few, yeah. Okay, so one of the most successful links I built uh, for a client mm -hmm. was on a, a Polish classified website. All right. okay, this client was trying to help people incorporate businesses in Delaware. Mm -hmm. And I decided to post an ad in this classified website because it seemed like a good opportunity to maybe reach some people who might become customers of his. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It, it I thought it might bring some traffic, and it did. It 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 brought him a couple of uh, uh, legal firms in Estonia and Latvia, who became right. regular regular customers who would incorporate new businesses all the time. They were incorporating cargo ships uh, that were bringing uh, uh, cargo to South America, and each ship they would incorporate new. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So they were they were incorporating like seven, eight, ten ships a week, which is wow, that's quite a few. It's, it's nice mm -hmm, when mm -hmm. when you can get some new clients like that. So try to get links from places where you'll get traffic from. Mm -hmm. Okay, there there was a, a article I read. It it stated like two thousand and two, so it's kind of old, but it's still on the web. It's it's called uh, 10 Tips for Writing the Living Web. Uh -huh. And it said things like, make good frenemies. Mm -hmm. Make people <laughs> who you can argue with online, who people might find the arguments and discussions worth following. Mm -hmm. So you blog something. So, so a friend of mine who writes about local search, uh, Wrote an argue, wrote 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 a blog post. I wrote a blog post in response to his blog post and disagreed with half of what he wrote. <laughs> he, he wrote a blog post in response to that and disagreed with half of my disagreements. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good example, actually. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. All right. So you have to be creative. Uh, if if some of the uh, most often used SEO, um, you know, strategies, tactics are not very applicable in your niche, there are other ways like, uh, to, to be in front of your customers, like the ones you suggested um, just now. All right, so um, we have a few questions from, from the group. Um, I'm going to try and find some time for each of them. So uh, the first one, um, uh, a guy from the group uh, is asking the following. So if we have, uh, I made it shorter, but uh, I think that's the essence of it. If we have hundreds of articles with lots of tags and categories, is it okay to let them be indexed or um, 
because we we know plugins like Yoast, for example, if we are running on WordPress, uh, and we we know that some websites are recommending for you to get rid of any types of pages which are practically not adding uh, to to the to the content you have because those are ways to group your content, but it's not it's not unique content. But some websites, um, for one reason or another, sometimes it's really uh, close to your mind why why this is happening. In others, you can't really fully understand why, uh, for example, such pages are bringing you a lot of traffic, and you know that you, uh, by the book, if you follow the book, you should this, uh, you know, they index them or block them from indexing with robots.txt rules, etc. But you just prefer to keep them because they still work for you for some reason. Um, I did I did work for an SEO agency that had a blog that had categories that were embarrassing. Mm -hmm. Like <laughs> number one search firm. That's yeah. the category. There were four hundred or so categories on that blog. Wow. And I told them, if you want me to keep on blogging, <laughs> you've got to get rid of some of those because I'm embarrassed to work yeah. for you. I'm embarrassed yeah. to put my name on blog posts. Yeah. So they got rid of some. Uh, okay, so Matt Cuts and people do bring his name up still because he did lots of stuff. Mm -hmm. He had a blog post he wrote <clears throat> where he said, if you have uh, keyword cloud pages mm -hmm. and you stuff them for the keywords, <laughs> Google will consider it keyword stuffing. <laughs> And I'm assuming and, and, they, they and will be indexable. They they won't potentially, be potentially potentially penalize you for them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, so you've uh, you've got to think if if you're going to uh, use tags, if you're not going to no index them, mm -hmm. and you're going to have a keyword cloud, is Google thinking that you're keyword stuffing? They might. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think that his question was uh, regarding the case where these pages are producing well for you, meaning they, they were generating clicks, impressions, you know, maybe they are selling some of their products through those pages. And I think that uh, while he was asking the question, he was aware that it's better uh, not to have them indexed, but his dilemma was coming from, from the fact that they're doing fine with having them. Uh, at, at this exact moment, of course, we can't tell in future, but... Uh, that's the dilemma here, I think. If, if he recognizes that there's a potential risk. Mostly blog pages, he said, Gabor Imre. And yeah, blog that, pages that's... can get penalized too. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yeah. So the rules apply um, across the board. Right. Yeah. All right. Great. Uh, uh, great answer. So the, the next question is um, coming from Garrett Dane, actually. Uh, one of the other admins uh, uh, within the group, he's specializing in e-commerce SEO and lots of other things, but this question uh, is related to e-commerce. So what are some of the most important points to consider when doing SEO for e-commerce websites? Some some tactics that are uh, specifically tailored uh, towards these types of websites, some general um, rules that always apply when we talk about uh, sites uh, that are selling products online. Okay, let me give you one that's completely out, out, out of the box that mm -hmm. he probably hasn't heard, or chances are he hasn't heard from anyone else. Uh, the company that makes uh, barcodes for products in stores is GS1. Mm -hmm. they're, they're in central New Jersey. They, they're the ones who make those uh, barcodes that get scanned by machines as you're yeah. paying. Uh, they... Uh, make product codes called GT, G10s. Mm -hmm. uh, they have a, a, a GS1 uh, search, which he should search for mm -hmm. because it, it's a, 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 a template you can fill out about your products. It'll help you generate structured data for your product pages. Mm -hmm. That includes lots of their, they, they extended schema. They're one of the first companies to come up with an extension for schema. And they've got a lot more information, mm -hmm. uh, a lot more detailed information about products. Like uh, 
is it packed with pro with items that might cause allergies? Mm -hmm. uh, it's it's unique stuff. It's the direction that SEO is heading in, where where they include that much extra information. People hadn't been doing that before. Uh, GS1 has 40 years of experience with with uh, barcodes. Uh, I don't know if that's the one. Uh, GS1 that, that, that's that's their website. They're they're very big. They they work with lots of companies. Yeah. yeah. You can you can see G10s on lots of sites like eBay and uh, Amazon. Yeah, one of the biggest players. Yeah. Yeah. So basically, they created something which will benefit the the entire industry. And people are just happy to to mention them, to to give them credit, even though they are selling products as well. So it's about being creative and think out outside of the box as usual. Yeah. All right. All right. Great. Um, so another question: um, Do you have any predictions regarding voice search and how it could affect SEO? I guess in the near and more distant future because it's becoming a thing which more and more people are performing. It's really easy for you to, to do it from everywhere. Uh, there are some houses who are equipped with you know, um, equipment that uh, allows you to give voice comments, open the door, uh, turn on the shower, that type of stuff. But how does it affect the SEO industry? Um, when uh, Google announced Hummingbird, one of the examples that they gave was they asked a two-part query. Uh, when was Barack Obama born and mm -hmm. who is he married to? And they didn't say who is Barack Obama married to. They said who is he married to? So yeah, they use a pronoun he to refer to the person they mentioned in the first query. Uh, mm -hmm. So that's a conversational search. It's a aspect of conversation uh, that you use pronouns. They, uh, that's called a co-reference. Mm -hmm. in in, in uh, uh, natural language processing. And they're going to be using more of this natural language processing. So yeah. it's there are a bunch of natural language processing videos on YouTube that are worth watching to understand better. Uh, so Google did come out with a patent a couple of years ago where they said if they recognize that a person asking questions has an accent, Mm -hmm. That's they might they might personalize the search results based upon the accent they recognize. Yeah, that's amazing. Uh, I mean, to go that far uh, to understand even accents and uh, different speech from the usual one. Right. Um, so yeah. So basically, it's uh, it's going into the direction of, uh, as you say, conversation and probably following people's train of thoughts. Like for example, if I ask you uh, who is Barack Obama, you answer me, and then I, if I ask you as my second question, who is his wife, you know that I'm still referring to Barack Obama. But previously, right. it was impossible for Google before those enhancements, you know, uh, uh, in the search algorithms. Yeah. All right, so um, we are almost one hour uh, since we since we started. So one final question before before I ask you for for your contacts uh, where people can find you. So one very broad question, uh, which I can't uh, you know neglect. So uh, what is the future of SEO? People are constantly asking, especially I think <laughs> this year. Yeah, it's it's uh, one of the hottest trends because of so many new changes, not that before they weren't um, uh, interesting things that were happening, but uh, I think that, for example, uh, after Rank Brain, then uh, the HTTPS migration to make the, the World Wide Web a more secure place, uh, speed, which is uh, one of the things that everybody is frowning um, very slow web websites. So basically, Google is more or less trying to educate us to perform better for for the greater good, for for um, for the you know the the better future for all of us uh, regarding the search and the overall experience on the internet. So, uh, but what is the future according to you? Um, of the okay, the, the two minute answer. Uh, uh, last blog post I wrote on SEO by the Sea. Uh, I mentioned 
involved artificial intelligence and, and mm -hmm. lots of links to articles about artificial intelligence. Yeah. Uh, Sundar Pichan, the CEO of Google, uh, used to say that mobile first was the future of Google, but then he changed it last year to artificial intelligence is uh, first is now the future of Google. So, uh, I think he's right. And, and Google came up with, uh, 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 they turned one of their chief engineers, Jeffrey Dean, into the head of uh, the Google brain team, which focuses upon machine learning and artificial intelligence. Uh, they developed a chip called the TensorFlow chip, which they let people using Google Plow, Cloud user free. So mm -hmm. they're, they're training people on how to use machine learning in the cloud. Uh, they started uh, a program where they're teaching new employees at Google how to use machine learning and how to use uh, programming involving machine learning. Yeah. So, so SEO is become, going to become a lot more uh, machine learning and deep learning friendly. Mm -hmm. uh, we know that uh, the Panda update supposedly involved uh, Google learning lots of features about websites and yeah. then using machine learning to understand which pages use, uh, use those features they learned about websites as training data to help them learn better which were good websites, which were bad websites, mm -hmm. which were high quality websites and which weren't. Yeah. Uh, you don't need to know machine learning to build a high quality website. No, you don't really, yeah. But, but and so you don't necessarily need to learn machine learning or artificial intelligence to keep on doing SEO. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> luckily for us, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sure. So we don't, right. we don't we don't all need PhDs, but we can still build websites that people want to use. Yeah, by using our human common sense, for example, what what we would like to uh, to to come across uh, to land on, and that's probably valid for all the other people out there. Yeah. All right. So uh, thanks. Great insight so far. I'm 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 very excited. So um, to wrap it up, uh, where can people find you, Bill? Uh, what are the places um, online where you are most uh, active? Um, okay, I, I uh, work for GoFish Digital, and they're at gofishdigital.com. Uh, they're they're just outside Virginia. Um, I blog at SEO by the Sea. Uh, I do a weekly hangout on air called Bill Amon's Bogus Hangout. Yeah, on Google Plus with uh, my friend Eamon Johns, and we have a few other people who join us. <laughs> uh, Terry Van Horn, uh, Doc Sheldon. Uh, yeah. I'm probably going to write a couple articles for Search News Central, which is a new uh, site from Doc Sheldon. It used to be run by David Harry. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, yeah at SEO Dojo and Doc took it over. It's starting up again. Uh, I'd look for it. I think it'll be good. Yeah. yeah I think so too. I mean, uh, whatever you're uh, into, I mean, uh, obviously it's, it's going to be something exquisite. So, um, okay, um, guys, I hope you, you love this video and this very first session with, with our honorable guest, Bill Slavsky here. Bill, I want to personally thank you one more time for your appearance here uh, in front of our audience. I, I really think that that's the right path for all of us, for the whole community to, to educate themselves, you know, which is great that we have the chance to do it for free because of people like you. Uh, that's, that's why I started this community in the first place, just to give free knowledge because people really need it. And it's not all about the commercial, uh, you know, intent at the end. There are more important things than that. And I think with your uh, first appearance here and all the other people who um, luckily will, will stand in front of us in the next AMA sessions and you included, I will be more than happy if you, if you can find time in your, um, you know, overcrowded schedule for some other show. It's going to be great for us all. So thanks. Uh, any final words? Uh, uh, for me. Uh, just 
wanted to say thank you and uh, I enjoyed this talk. Uh, enjoy the questions. Happy right. to see some really good ones. Thank you. Thank you. Much appreciated. Okay, guys, uh, have yourself a nice rest of the day. And uh, me and Bill are saying goodbye to you and see you soon. Bye now. Bye.